Hey there, YouTube. Welcome back to the playground. Glad you stopped by. Uh, so on this episode, we're going to start working on painting and getting all the final details and the final assembly uh, done on the truck. So if you haven't seen the first two um, videos, I'll put a link up here to the first one. That one will link to the second one. And this is part three. Um, so we've got boy, this monstrosity is assembled and is ready to get the finishing wiring done. Um, unfortunately, kind of have to have painted stuff to put on and, you know, make sure everything fits while I'm doing that. And, you know, like light buckets and the turn signals and the cab lights and all that stuff has to get wired in so then it can get plugged in and kind of wrap it all up. So what I'm gonna start doing is, well, first what I've done is on the top of the cab, there's a hole for the aerial to come through. Um, when these were originally made, you had the old school, you know, 2700 megahertz radios with the big long antennas on them. So it had a mount on the top of the roof to put in aluminum stanchion and then the antenna tube coming out of that. Well, since the new radios don't need that, um, what I did is I clipped off the kind of ridge of that little circle, um, sanded it down, filled it, so how I did that was you just take excess sprue, um, clip it up into tiny little pieces and in a small jar, just put those little tiny pieces in with a little bit of the Tamiya glue, uh, the thin stuff, and just let it sit. And it'll turn into a thick paste. And you can just basically fill in that hole and it's no different than any of the surrounding plastic once it cures because it is the plastic. Um, I, what I could have done was you could either sand or you know grate off um like if you have a rasp or something grate off a pile of this and stick it in the hole and just smoosh it in and then just add a few drops of the glue and it'll activate and kind of melt everything into one it's kind of the it's nicknamed sprue goo so basically that half sprue half glue sprue glue um you just basically mix that in let it harden now i did learn a hard lesson, you want to get it just in that hole. You don't want to smear it all over the body and then sand off the excess. What will happen is it'll start, because it's melting into everything, if you start sanding it too soon, it can actually like ball up and it actually pulled a little tiny chunk out of the roof. But basically just put in some uh, uh, filler putty in there and then finish sanding it. Um, for the initial sanding, I just use one of these little sanding sticks. It's like a 180-240 sanding stick. And then I used a piece of 320 on top of the stick and um, got that down. And then I went over the truck lightly with um, 600 everywhere just to rough it up and give it a tooth. And as I said in the last video, it does have some mold lines across the roof and the cab and the sleeper. Um, took the razor knife and just kind of back scraped those off and then sanded those down, got everything nice and smooth. So once we get paint on this, there shouldn't be any little ridges or lines outside of the intended uh, body lines and rivets and stuff. Um, so once we got that all done, I went in and I taped off any of the areas I did not want to overspray and I pretty much want to keep as much of the interior black as possible. Um, so we masked off all the windows from behind. Now tip when doing that, it's going to leave it sticky um, anywhere that there's exposed tape. Come back from the other side and just patch over that with a little bit of extra tape. That way you don't accidentally stick a thumb on it and it wants to stick the stuff and possibly peel your tape off. But um, inner fenders, um, I just use some cardstock to block off the back and the grill just to keep as much blue and primer from getting in there as possible. And then the same thing with the fenders, we spray painted those black first. And then I came in and put the uh, tape on the inside and then everything else will be blue. I'll come back and paint these uh, later. I blast them with spray paint, but they're just way too tricky to try to tape off. So I'll just paint everything blue and I'll come back and just uh, brush paint those in black. Also started working on the interior and I'll stick a picture up here. So we got the seats painted. Um, we did that in the brown with some black on there. Uh, it's kind of hard to see in the picture. Uh, but we did the dash in brown, and then I taped it off, and the top of it is in the semi-gloss black, so it'll look like it has a dash pad there. Um, steering wheel was done in the uh, uh, like a, a metallic uh, silver, 
and then back painted with the black, you know, just to give it some contrast and everything. It looked like the cool, nice metal spoke wheel. And started working on the driver figure. Um, unfortunately, I can't get the driver figure fully painted until we get the body on and have him in the seat with the dash mount and everything because you have to figure out exactly where his arms go um, because obviously we don't want him driving you know like this and the steering wheel be down there or you know vice versa so you kind of have to have him sitting in the seat and then glue his arms on so it looks like he's holding on to the steering wheel so that one I'm gonna paint everything but his shirt and once we get it the cab and everything ready get it mocked up on there and then I can kind of reach in and you know glue his arms on let it set up in the truck pop the cab off and then take him out sand him down paint the shirt and he'll be good to go hopefully he doesn't come out looking like a zombie so far so good but you know faces are really really hard um, but we'll see how that ends up um, but I'm gonna get to painting and I'll just take some pictures as we're painting of the different steps so we're gonna do the fine uh, surface primer first and then we're going to put a couple layers of TS-89 Pearl Blue. And then we're going to back that with the um, TS-13 Clear. I wish I'd gotten the gloss clear, but this should look um, fine on it. Uh, if it comes out too flat looking, I can pick up another can of the gloss clear and spray over that. But I want to get as much protection on this paint as possible because I don't want any scrapes or you know, gouges going down to the white. So a few extra coats of this, you know, if it does get scratched, uh, hopefully we just sand it out and blast a little bit more clear on that spot. Um, hopefully it doesn't ever get scratched at all. I'm not, I'm, I really want to baby this. <laughs> I want to play with it, but I definitely don't want to get it all scratched up. But I'm going to go down and start getting some primer on this guy. And like I said, I'll take some pictures and stick them up in a little montage. And then we'll come back once everything is kind of finished up with paint. So see you in a minute. Well, hey guys. Um, so quick update. Got the primer on the truck. And here's some pictures of that. And then we got two coats of the TS-89 uh, blue on it. Sadly, I only got two cans. Um, I was expecting a little bit better coverage. But that blue is rather transparent. So two good heavy coats, not heavy heavy, but two good coats of it, and it is um, still needs another coat or two. Now, unfortunately, my local hobby shop is out. So I'm gonna have to order that, so that's gonna be a few more days uh, delay getting here. So that's a bummer, um, especially since we're getting, you know, so close to the end, but you know, it'll give it a couple days for that first two coats to really, really um, cure and harden up. I can do some wet sanding on it, get out any kind of little, uh, there's a few little tiny uh, dust nibs in there. Uh, but overall, the paint looks absolutely phenomenal right now. Um, so I can touch that up a little bit while waiting on the paint to get here. Um, I went ahead and got all the stickers kind of pre-cut and got a few of them put on. Um, so I'm going to get the dash stickers on as soon as that paint's ready. And then everything else is pretty much body. So I'm kind of waiting for that. So it's going to be four or five days probably for me. It's going to be a few seconds for you. So see you in a few seconds. All right, guys. So I decided to do a little modification. So I ran the wire coming from the rumble motor down underneath the truck and we've cut it and I am installing a switch on it and on the plate that has your disconnect lever on it normally actually has a switch mount in it that I can mount this switch directly to so I took the switch mount off because I'm painting that blue and there'll be more on that here in a minute um, because I'm painting it to match the, the truck and then this switch will be down in there below the deck and the wires will get ruled up into this main wiring harness from the rear and that way you know if I'm planning on driving this thing for a while I can disconnect that little rumble motor in there and not have it shaking the truck the entire time I'm out driving so I'm gonna get this wired up and I'll be right back all right guys so we're back um, I got the switch installed that will disconnect the rumble motor from the MFC and I did test it. Now there is one word of caution when doing this. 
if you turn if you have it off and the truck is already running do don't try to turn it back on um, that motor evidently gets a surge of power when the truck turns on and starts running and then as it's idling it kind of runs on lower power and if you try to switch this on when it is idling that motor doesn't have enough um, guts to it to actually turn the uh, counterweight around so it just kind of sits there and kicks that counterweight back and forth um, so that's one word if you do um, add this little switch in to turn off that rumble motor um, either leave it off or shut the truck down turn the switch back on and start the truck back up that way it runs through the startup cycle and that motor is going to be constantly spinning in there um, but if you noticed, uh, we started getting some of the interior in, so we got, well, we got a lot of the wiring kind of tidied up and, and run. Um, so I was able to stick the seats in. I think what I'm going to do is take a piece of um, black cardstock or something and slide it in behind the seats, kind of either tape it into the body or just slide it in behind the seats just to hide the view of the wiring because I really don't want to see any of that. Um, we've got seats in. Um, got the fenders on and you got the stickers on those and I'm really really digging that um, I was a little hesitant to put the stickers on just because that blue pearl just looks so nice um, but I think the the yellow stickers are really pop on this blue and are gonna give it just enough to set it off and give it some contrast so it's not just a giant rolling blueberry <laughs> um, so I do have to encapsulate the speaker box up here. I'm going to work on that next. Um, but we do have all the wiring run from front to back and zip tied into place. Um, the switch should sit right around there, um, hopefully, because I really don't have much wiggle room. <laughs> um, I did have to reroute my um, the coupler switch. I had it running to the back and then running forward. Um, but with the MFC mounted where I have it, I had just enough room if I moved it from the back to the front and made it more of a straight shot. So kind of liked it the other way because it hid the wiring a little bit better, but I didn't really want to splice in, you know, an inch of wire just to make that go from front to back. So basically I unraveled the loom, moved the wire, basically I had to pull the clip, move that wire, and then roll it back up. That loom is really, really nice. Um, I'm going to remember this for other jobs where I have a mess of wiring because, um, you know, if you want to incorporate something, you roll it a little bit and then add that wire to it and keep rolling. If you forget something, it's easy enough to unroll it and go right back. But anyway, um, I'm going to keep tinkering a little bit here and there. I don't want to start messing with the body yet. I still want to give that another day or so to fully cure. Um, the fender, I put a almost a fingerprint in it. There's a little bit of a blemish there. Um, when I was putting the stickers on, you know, I was kind of holding the piece and squeezing it and putting the sticker on and realized that, you know, the paint is still a little tender. So I'm going to give the body another day or so to fully cure. That way I don't, I do not want to put a big fat thumbprint in anything on that body. Uh, plus I've got the um, disconnect panel here and I also got some diamond plate styrene. So I also got some of this Plastistruct, I guess I Plastruct, I don't know, Styrene, but it is O scale diamond plate. So it's 1 48th scale um, diamond plate. So I also picked up some 16th scale because 14th scale truck, 16th scale versus 48th scale, you know, I didn't, the 48th scale looked more like the diamond plate that was attached to the um, switch but you know 16 scale sounded right um, 16 scale is way too big this 48 scale is almost identical to the diamond plate that is sitting on that uh, disconnect tray so basically I'm gonna cap the back and the little piece in between the the fifth wheel carrier that will have that, that um, switch disconnect and another piece here so those just got sprayed, so they're still really tacky, so I can't really do anything with that. Again, the body's got to wait a day or so. So I'm going to end it here for you guys. I'll be right back in just a second. So, again, I don't want to mess up the paint, so I'm going to I'm gonna keep tinkering a little bit here and there. Um, it's going to be a day, 
maybe two days before I come back, but it's instant for you guys. So it's starting to look like a truck. So we've got uh, the grill, the headlight assembly, the headlight buckets in, air cleaners, all the little extra little greebly bits, um, interior, uh, the dash is in and everything. One word of advice when you go to do this truck, I would suggest go ahead before you paint this truck to glue in the little moonroof deal. Um, I would even go to the extent of, you know, gluing it in, letting it harden, and then filling it in with some body putty, uh, some tamiya putty or, you know, any kind of modeling putty that's gonna dry hard. Um, you don't have to, you can leave it outlined, but in all honesty, I think it would have been easier to put these lights in if that had been attached. Yeah, I, I had to scrape glue off of it. I mean, I had to scrape the paint off of it. You had to glue it on, try to let it set up, and I still kind of pushed it loose when I was putting the lights in. You know, I didn't plan ahead, unfortunately. So I would glue this in before you paint it. Get it all fit, fit and finished, glue it in, paint it, and then just attach your lights. One thing about the little lights that are included with the MFC kit, the holes in the body are too narrow for the light to go through. So I actually had to take my side cutters and nip off the little flange that is on the bottom of the light bulb. Um, I'll put a picture here of what I'm talking about. Uh, but on each side, so, so your wires are going in this way, you wanna clip off that bottom edge here and that bottom edge there. That way it'll fit into those little rectangular holes so you can feed the lights up through. I could have drilled the holes out bigger, but then you're leaving more exposed opening in the body. So just be careful, just nip off that little flange. Um, you don't have to leave, cut into the light, just nip off that little flange and it'll pop through. Uh, so we got the uh, cab lights run, we've got the headlights run, I've got all those wires taped up into the body so they're kind of where they're gonna be. I still need to do the turn signals, um, but it's getting late. I'm getting kind of burned out. These steps, you know, aren't difficult, but with this nice shiny body and all this stuff on my bench, you know, you gotta be really, really careful that you just don't go dragging a screwdriver across it or leave a pair of snips on the bench and then set the body down. Get a junk towel. Don't steal a good towel from your significant other or whoever. Um, I don't wanna be responsible for that argument, but get you a junk towel that is no longer needed. Uh, put that down on your workbench. That way you can work on the truck, you can flip it over, um, you can move it around without worrying about scratching the, the 40 some dollars in paint that you put on this and all the time you let it cure so you don't stick thumbprints in it and you know you definitely don't want to get a scratch on it. So as you can see, we got the start of the decals on it. Um, I'm going to do something, well, I'm planning on doing something special with this. We'll see if it works out or not. Um, but this is the back of the cab and I want to kind of do something special on the back of that. So the kit comes with the cool little kind of silver pinstripe looking decals for it's like both sides and the back. Um, I don't think I'm going to use those. The less clear sticker I have on this, the better. I've tried cutting out all the stickers as close as possible and burnishing them down well so none of the clear shows. I really don't want any clear sticker taken away from the body and I know I've seen a lot of different ones done with this and in the light especially outside that sticker sticks out like a sore thumb so I don't think I'm putting those on and like I said I have something in, in mind for this I gotta see if it's gonna work if it doesn't mm, you just won't see it if it does it should be pretty cool so as you can see we stripped the chrome off of this and painted that um, make sure when you're doing this to go ahead and strip the chrome off because the paint does not stick well to the chrome and then prime it as well as priming the other diamond plate so everything is the same color. So everything on here has the same gray primer underneath of it. Since this paint is so translucent, if this was to remain the black plastic that it was and this was to remain the white plastic, there would be a stark difference in the color. So you got to prime everything so it's all one color. That way when you're putting this pearl um, paint underneath of it, it all comes out same color. The diamond plate is a little bit different, but as you can tell, it's about as close as possible. Uh, so eventually this will probably come out once we 
get further down the road and we get a trailer with the motorized leg kit. This is just double sided taped on, so all this will probably come out and we'll just redo some new stuff with a slot cut in it for the servo because that servo will mount inside the chassis rails. One thing I forgot to mention to you guys before, um, in the earlier video I pointed out that this was white plastic and in the manual it calls to paint it black, but I decided I used some um, aluminum duct tape. Now this isn't, you know, what you would normally think of duct tape of, you know, um, around the house, hairy homeowner stuff. This is actually like a metal foil aluminum tape for actual duct work. And all I did was cut it in strips and wrapped it around and put a big wide piece on the back, then wrap some thin strips around the outside. It's not as chrome as the bumper is, but it's just not some random off color black piece sticking out down there. All right, guys, we have a 99% finished truck. So the only thing I have left to do is, you know, wipe it down, get all the little fingerprints off of it, and take it somewhere to actually get some running video and glamour shots and all that good stuff. So one thing I found in my final testing of everything, once, you know, everything was all together, my reverse light's not working. Um, I checked the connection at the MFC, and that's in the correct slot, plugged in, the wire looks fine. I've looked underneath and the wire looks fine going into the light, so I don't know whether that light burned out. Um, the connector got broken or something, so I will have to take the rear bumper off and do some troubleshooting there. Um, thankfully, I do have a couple extra lights, so I believe these lights I can put in beside. And I didn't know I was going to have these left over, or I would have ran these a long time ago. Uh, but I was basically putting together best I could out of the instructions and you know maybe I missed it maybe I goofed I know the MFC instructions are kind of truck generic and the instructions in the book are like MFC or no MFC so I may have missed a step I don't know but regardless I have two small and two large um, so I guess these are the extra headlights for one of the other um, trucks because this only has the single pair of headlights which it's kind of weird. Um, I'll take an up-close pick. So you have a headlight bucket, and then beside it you have a headlight sticker. Seems kind of wonky. Um, I don't know why you wouldn't put both sets of headlights into a dual headlight bucket. I don't know. Not a designer, just a builder. Um, but I think these two small ones will go back in the back, and I'll have to figure out if I can get the third one working. If not, I'll just have the two on the outside lit up with these. There are a few little things on here. Um, actually, there is one more other thing. Um, I'm trying to get a custom uh, license plate made. So I have the Tamiya license plate on, but I have the dual plate holders. So I'm gonna have Tamiya and another special one. Um, there's something on the back of the cab. I'm not showing you guys yet. You have to tune into the actual running video to see that. Um, but, you know, I, I'm so tickled with this truck. It came out absolutely beautiful. I love the, I'm so glad I went with the box art paint. Um, I'm so glad I went ahead and put the stickers on. I think it would look like a rolling blueberry if I didn't put the, the yellow decals on to kind of zhuzh it up a little bit and uh, break up that blue. Um, the chrome bits look awesome. Um, these little roof lights, man, frustrating. Not, not frustrating, um, tedious. There's a lot of little bits in there you got to glue together. Um, I would suggest if you're going to build this kit, go ahead and get these glued up right out of the gate. Um, that way everything is good and set up and strong and ready to put on when you get to this step. So there's a few little questionable things in here every now and then, like the headlight buckets. I don't quite understand that, but you know that's probably been the way it's been forever and will always be that way just because they're just going to keep cranking out these kits. Uh, it's not something that is a deal breaker or looks awful. It's just confusing, you know, if you have dual headlight lights and you have a dual headlight bucket, maybe make two headlight ports. But anyway, uh, we've got Chuck, the driver in there. I'll try to get an up close picture of him. Uh, with the tinted windows, it's really hard to see. The visor, I don't know how in the world you're supposed to glue that on. Uh, it doesn't fit particularly well. So I drilled two little tiny holes, um, I've got a little finger drill pin vise. Um, I just marked out on the 
visor where the hole should be, drilled that on both sides, stuck the visor on, just ran that same drill bit in, and then drilled out the hole for going into the cab. So the hole in the cab you want just big enough that the screw will go into but grips nice and tight, and the hole on the outside you want to come back and drill that out a step or two larger so the screw slides through really easily. Uh, so that's on and you know it does allow for a little bit of adjustment uh, to make sure you get it lined up just the way you want it. Well it pivots uh, but I really like the uh, flat uh, NATO black that we did on the pipes. It doesn't have that glossy black look that uh, normally would be on there. It's got a little bit more of a matte actual rubber look so that that was cool. And uh, shout out to Bob from Hobby Concepts for that little tip of watching his videos. This has taken me about 10 evenings to complete. Uh, and some of those were, you know, three and four hour sit downs. So the initial build uh, that we I kind of sat down and cranked through a few hours of that. The rest of it has been painting and detailing and adding all the little tiny fiddly bits and so if you like plastic models, or if you've ever built plastic models, you like building RC cars, um, this, th these are the kits for you. Uh, it, it kind of is the best of both worlds. It has all the details and coolness of a really nice plastic stat static model, but it also has you know the cool factor of you know the lights and the sounds and the movement of an RC. So. Again, I understand they're expensive, and another huge shout out to RCL for sending this to me, uh, the truck and the MFC. Uh, I'm humbled that the offer was presented, and I'm just ecstatic of how awesome this thing looks in life. Uh, I don't want to get too many up-close pictures of it. I want to get it outside on some pavement, and unfortunately, I live in the middle of the woods with a gravel driveway, so I'm actually going to have to make a special trip out to get this guy out in the sun, on the pavement, get some low angle cool shots and get some running video so you guys can see everything up close. The rumble, the, the noise, the, the movements and everything. It's really, really cool. Anyway guys, I'm gonna wrap it up here. I appreciate you guys watching the video series. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you learned something about it. Um, and I hope you guys will go out and get a kit. Even if you don't get the MFC, if you just get the truck, you know, the truck alone is absolutely awesome, and with the MFC, it is something you can add on at a later date. Uh, just pop the cab off and, you know, start working on it. Uh, one little cool thing I did add, um, I have just carbon fiber sticker sheet. It's just crap sticker sheet. You can go to uh, your craft store and find what looks like carbon fiber. Um, I didn't have anything dark. But I put the carbon fiber sticker on a piece of cardstock and just taped it to the back of the cab section. So when you look into the cab, you don't see any of the wiring, you don't see any of the MFC, nothing. You just see the driver and the seats and everything just looks black in there. Because it's the tinted windows, you really can't see this carbon fiber. So technically you just get black cardstock or dark gray cardstock or whatever you want to get and stick in there. But putting that little divider in there and taping it to the inside because you can't see the tape at all. And then you slide that down on there and all your wires are behind that in and you have your cardstock in between the seat and the thing. So, you know, again, I, I can't express how happy I am and how cool this looks in person. And I hope the next video, when I get some running video of it, it really captures the, the awesome uh, color and pop that this paint has and just how many cool details are on this truck. Anyway, guys, I'm out of here. I've got a couple more videos coming up. Actually, as soon as this is off the bench, I'm jumping into those. So, everybody out there, be happy, be healthy, be safe. I'll catch you next time. And again, hit that like button, subscribe. It's really helping out the channel. All right, guys, have a good one. Bye.